In today's podcast, we're going to learn about why God sometimes allows us to be stuck in a season and the reward for those who push through. Welcome to the Closer to Jesus podcast. My name is Ashley Enos, and I'm convinced that the answer to every problem is a deeper understanding of who Jesus is and how he shares his heart with us. Colossians 2.3 tells us that in him are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Each episode will be dedicated to strengthening our relationship with Jesus and growing more in love with him every day. Hanging on the promise of James 4.7 that says if we draw closer to God, he will draw closer to us. If there's anything I don't like, it is being stuck in a crowd. I don't want to be in the middle of a crowd. I don't want to feel like I can't get out. I don't want to feel stuck in a situation. I don't want to feel stuck in a group of people. I just don't like being stuck. But here in our lesson today, we're going to learn about why we are stuck sometimes in our situation and what it takes to push through, to reach Jesus, to get a hold of our miracle and get a change, the change that we desire. This is probably how the woman with the issue of blood felt. She felt stuck. She had been sick for a very long time. She had gone to many doctors and nothing changed. So let's let's read about her situation. In Mark 5, 25 through 26, And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood 12 years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, it was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. Maybe you can relate. She had been sick for 12 years, and it wasn't that she didn't want to get better. It wasn't that she wasn't seeking help because she was. She was doing all that she knew to do, and maybe this sounds familiar. Maybe you're doing all that you know to do. There is a situation in your life. There's a healing that needs to take place in your body, and you are trying everything. What else can I do? I've spent all the money I can spend. I've seen all the people I can see. I've done all the things I can do. How do I move forward? This is where she was, this woman with the issue of blood. Um, It wasn't that she didn't want to get better because she did. She sought help and she didn't mind paying for it. She needed something to change. Why did Jesus wait to answer? What, What could be the solution to her problem? And what was the cause of the delay? Well, there was a day that she heard about Jesus. She had seen all those physicians, all those doctors. If you can imagine, if you've ever gone to one doctor and then another doctor trying to figure out uh, what the problem is, then you can know that that can make you really weary. It can make you really tired to try and continually to figure out what a solution is and have no idea how to make things better. And I'm sure she was weary in her mind, weary in her body. She had been excluded from society. She was an outcast. She had no control over it. And yet she was being punished for this thing that was happening to her. But she heard about Jesus and she had enough grit inside of her to say, I'm going to try one more time. If I can just touch the hem of his garment, I believe something might change. And that's a lot. That's a lot to say when you are down and out. When you have been trying for so long and you're weary, just hoping is hard sometimes. But there's something about Jesus that brings hope to the hopeless. There's something about the name of Jesus, the power of Jesus, that can make you believe that he actually will be a help to you. He cares about what you're going through, and he can be the solution. So Mark 5, 27 through 34, when she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus immediately, knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him, and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace, and be whole of thy plague. There was a crowd of people trying to get to Jesus because it's Jesus. (laughs) They had heard of Jesus. They knew that he wrought special miracles. There were things that Jesus did that nobody else had ever done. 
that God had to be with Jesus. They weren't sure who he was exactly. Some believed him, some didn't. But they were pushing and shoving, trying to get close to Jesus. And here was this woman. She had something on her mind. She she knew that even just a little bit of faith, just one little touch of the master would, would be enough for her to get what she needed. She had the faith to believe that Jesus could do it and that he had the ability to make it happen. Sometimes it's easy for us to go, yeah, Jesus can do it, but I don't know if he will do it. Jesus is able, but when I, when I go to him, will he actually hear me? When I talk to him, does he actually care? And will he use his resources, his his virtue? Will he pour that out on my life? Sometimes doubt can creep in, not about who Jesus is, but about what he's willing to help do. And so when she had touched him, she had, she had moved through the crowd. She had her sole focus on Jesus, not pushing and pulling, but just focused on on what she needed she was able to get the miracle and and that fountain of her blood that ran for 12 years that problem that was continuously in her life for 12 long years was immediately stopped immediately and he knew Jesus knew that virtue had gone out of him and I think he probably knew what happened I think he knew when he stepped on the scene he was he was God fully God fully man he knows but He turned around and looked to see who touched my clothes. And the message version puts the questions that the disciples had because the disciples were, they thought, this is crazy, Jesus. You have all these people pushing and shoving you, and you're wondering about one touch? You notice one touch? The message version says, what are you talking about with this crowd pushing and jostling you? You're asking who touched me? And she had the faith to believe that that single touch of his garment held enough power to heal something that had been gone on for so long. And others were shaking him, trying their best to get what they needed from him, right? They were, they were not considerate of his needs. They were not considerate or reverence him at all. They just wanted to get what they wanted. <laughs> and this woman wanted the same thing, but she didn't want to push or shove. And, and that's encouragement. There's a lesson that, you know, if you are a meek person, maybe you, you aren't the boldest person in the room. Maybe you won't push your way through a crowd to, to shake Jesus. But if you are willing to do one thing, one act of faith, one act of obedience, maybe it's just a prayer that you pray in the midst of a congregation full of bold people and you feel like God I'm I'm just this outsider or I'm just I'm just out here to myself and I don't I don't have what everybody else has I can't I can't talk to a crowd I can't um you know give a word of encouragement I I can't pray loud or or over people I can't do all these big bold things you can just do one thing and it's that one thing sometimes that will be the answer to the prayer so she didn't grab a hold she simply touched and if you aren't someone who likes to stand out in a crowd you you can be the one who who God responds to also (laughs) so I like to be bold that's part of my personality I enjoy that part of the Lord but not everybody's like that the body is different the body works differently not everybody's an elbow if we were all elbows we'd be in trouble. We need different parts of the body all functioning together, doing what God has put in you to do. And that's important. So if you feel unseen, you feel lost in a crowd, know that that one little simple act of obedience that isn't so little, actually, it's pretty big because God asked you to do it and you did it. That can change the whole room. It can change. It can stop Jesus in his tracks. So the question is, why does God sometimes allow us to be in a long season of trying? Why did he not show up at her door the first day she needed a healing and just heal her? Why did he not do it the first time she asked? Why did he not do it the first doctor's visit she went to? Why did he let her continually go through this cycle of needing help seeking help and finding out that's not actually the help you need. Well, I believe that the Lord was teaching her something that she needed, some personal lesson that we can get a hold of and apply to our own life. He uses her as an example. We don't know her name, but we know her. 
we understand her. We sometimes are just like her. And so he gave her this sense of autonomy. She was a woman that was rejected. Something had happened to her body. She didn't do it. It just happened. And now she was rejected and she needed a healing and she spent her own money and she walked on her own feet to get to those doctors over and over again. And yet people pushed her aside and and they wanted nothing to do with her. But when she got in her mind to touch Jesus, he gave her a sense of autonomy that says, you know what? You participated in your healing. Jesus could have taken all the credit, all the glory, but listen to what he says to her in verse 34. He said unto her, daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and behold thy plague. He puts it back on her. He says, it's your faith that made you whole. You've been a victim for 12 years. You've been trying for 12 years. You've been waiting for someone to find a solution for you for 12 years. But actually, it's you. When you move in faith, you have the opportunity to touch Jesus. And Jesus is healing. He's power. He's glory. He's He's heaven brought down to earth. So he is always going to be who he is. And the question is, Do we reach out and touch him when we need something? Do we try to get a hold of the hem of his garment when we need help? And when Jesus turns around, she's afraid. She realizes like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have done that. (laughs) Y'all ever done that? You do something for the Lord and it's like, oh, uh, maybe I shouldn't have done that. There's a response. There's something and you're like, maybe I didn't do right here. Maybe I didn't actually hear the Lord. Maybe I wasn't actually supposed to pray that prayer. Maybe I wasn't supposed to speak that. Maybe I wasn't supposed to reach out and touch him. There's that moment of fear when he turns around and she thinks, oh, I don't think I did the right thing. And yet Jesus, he affirms what she did. And and he tells her, you know, he calls her daughter. He brings her into himself as a child of God. She's no longer an outsider. She's no longer someone on the outside looking in. But she is a part of the kingdom of heaven. And what she did will bless others thousands of years down the road. And if the Lord tarries it, it'll bless people a thousand years from now. That one act will be a blessing continually that people will speak about and know it was because of her faith. Her faith gave her the boldness to do something in a quiet way. And so Jesus, he could have taken the credit and lorded it over her that he was the one who did it. He was the one who healed her. But instead, he honored her and he restored her dignity by acknowledging in front of a crowd that she had taken the steps to become whole. There was nothing missing, nothing incomplete. She was now 100% the way she was always intended to be. No more sickness in her body. No more shame. No more being afraid. No more just trying to figure it out. She could live a life free of that illness and all the stuff that went with it. She could just walk in complete wholeness of Jesus Christ. And so by believing in God and trying one more time, she was not just a blessing to herself, but she was a blessing to everyone else. And I want to encourage you that when you reach out that one more time, even though you say, I've done this a hundred times, I've tried this a hundred times, and a hundred times it has not worked out. A hundred times it has come against me. A hundred times it has made me worse. And you put yourself out there over and over again. And oh my goodness, it's so hard to put yourself out there and to not find what it is you're searching for. But no, if you try one more time, that Jesus Christ will be there waiting for you. And when the time is right and it's perfect and everybody else is supposed to see it and it's going to impact the kingdom in the biggest way possible, all those people were just trying to get a hold of Jesus and yet he stopped for her, this woman, (laughs) who nobody regarded, nobody honored. He stopped for her and he'll stop for you too. And it's that one more time. So do it one more time. Just try one more time and see what happens. It may be completely unseen. It might be something you do in secret, just you and the Lord. But just try that one more time. Touch the hem of his garment in prayer. Touch the hem of his garment in praise. Try again, because the next time might be the right time to sweetly encounter the Lord. It was such a sweet moment, and she'll never forget it. I guarantee you, she would never forget that moment, and she would live in that moment over and over and over again. And I just want to encourage you, if you are sick in your body right now, if you would just see the Lord, see him in front of you, see that crowd pushing and prodding, trying to get to Jesus, and yet on your mind is wholeness and peace 
that passeth understanding and an ability to reach out. And if you will grab the hem of his garment, if you can see it, you can have it. Just get a hold of it because there's power and virtue that is released when you touch him. And he's beckoning you. I almost, he's pleading you one more time. Just try one more time. So Proverbs 13, 12 says, Hope deferred, make the heart sick. But when the desire cometh, it is a tree of life. And we draw closer to Jesus today, right now, by trying that that thing again. <laughs> you know what it is in your life. You know what you've tried. You know how hard you've worked. And you know that you've spent and you've toiled and and you've, You've tried and you've wanted and you've prayed and you've begged and you've pleaded and you've cried and you praised and you believed and it still didn't seem to come through. But that one more time might be the, be the trick. It might be the one that works out for you. So we're going to pray, friends, that the Lord would give us the grit, the boldness, and the belief to come against anything that would hinder us from from reaching out. So in Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you, God. We praise you. We bless you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for the hem of your garment. God, we thank you that you are glorified. You are healing. You are everything we need is wrapped up in you, and it is woven into our story. Your healing is woven into the thread of our lives, God. And so we release that right now in Jesus' name, that there would be healing that would that would flood us, that that healing virtue God, you said healing is the children's bread. You said that if we trust in you and you heal us, we shall be healed. God, we shall be healed. That's a promise. And so I speak that promise that whatever the need is, God, whether it's emotional or physical and financial, whatever the need is, God, that that you would bless that. And we believe and we trust and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. I hope you have enjoyed this week's episode, and I would love to hear what the Lord has put on your heart. I invite you to join me for a live Bible study on Facebook or YouTube every day at 5 a.m. Central. In this study, we are moving faith forward as we connect with Jesus by making Him the first thought on our mind. Visit AshleyEnos.com to find books, Bible studies, and more. And you can always find me on Facebook or YouTube.